In this video, I want to show you how you can create a KPI Sparkline card in Power BI. I'm going to show you how to create something like this, where it shows you a lot of information, like showing the total values, showing the trends going up or down based on comparing against previous year, previous month. It shows you a card here, which shows you the lines of the sales in different months. It shows you and highlights the highest and lowest points of those months. It shows you a trend line, which is fully customizable and dynamic based on the selections that you make in your report. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can build it along with me as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Power BI, as you know, already have some card visuals that you can use out of the box, like the card visual or the KPI visual, which gives you this kind of information. And I've already covered both of these in video in the past. So if you want to know more about how to use those, go check those out. So the solution that I'm showing you today is not a replacement for using those visuals because they also still have a place, but more of an alternative if you wanted to give a bit more interactivity to your visuals. So some of the limitations that you might have with the card, for example, is that you can only have a card visual there without being able to add trend lines or something like this. The KPI visual also allows you to add trend lines but it doesn't let you dig down into the details of those trends, like which months are the highest, which months are the lowest. And it also doesn't allow you to add and customize as much as you might like to do, like changing the lines into an area or something like this. So today I'm going to show you how you can do it uh, quite easily in Power BI using no custom visuals. Here, I've already pre-built it, um, but we're going to build it from scratch so you can see how I built it. But the trick with this visual is that it's actually not a card visual, but instead it's a simple line chart modified and formatted to make it look like it's a, it's a card. So there are a couple of different elements working here. So we have the title and the subtitle, which is a recent uh, feature that was added in Power BI that is dynamic. Now I've covered different ways that you can use dynamic elements in your charts before. So we'll use the same technique here. The key things here are obviously the line charts that lets you hover over. And, and that's already a something that you don't need to build because that's already something that the line charts already do. And also highlighting the highest and the lowest, which is something that we'll have to do using some tricks that is not easily available or not so obvious. Maybe it's a glitch, but we'll see. So we're going to start with a an empty one here using the same data sets that uh, I was showing you earlier. So we're using our favorite uh, data set here, the Northwind data set, which is a collection of different tables that for a fictional company that sells goods internationally. Essentially, we have a bunch of tables here that shows how many orders have been made. Those orders may contain different products, how much they were sold for, who they were sold for, and the categories of the products. So we've already created the data model because and I don't want to talk too much about the data model itself because it's not the main focus of this demo. Um, it's just to simulate how it would look like in a kind of a real world scenario. I've also pre-created a few things here, like a calendar table, which is something that we'll use for our time intelligence purposes. I have just the date column, month and year, just so that we can visualize the line charts. And I've also got some pre-created measures here. So the total sales, which uh, is pretty much just uh, multiplying the unit price against the quantity and the total sales previous year, which uses the previous year function to calculate what the total sales uh, was on previous year based on the current context. So let's start by bringing in and creating this line chart, right? So let's see, how do you create the line chart? So right here, I'm still trying to get used to this on object interaction. In our total sales, we'll drag that calculation in and then month is what we want to see here. So it shows us the whole history of, of our sales that we have in our data sets, but we want to be able to filter by year as I showed you earlier. So I'm going to add a slicer here. Let's see more options, change it to a drop dropdown. Uh, sorry, just a vertical list like this, just a simple one. And we're also going to add categories. So to keep it simple, I'm going to copy and paste. 
and then I'm going to change the field to categories like this. Fantastic. So now you should be able to select a year and see those sales change the categories to see by different categories, by different product categories, and that changes the line chart accordingly. So before we continue formatting the line chart to make it look like a card, let's start to set up the DAX expressions that we'll use and we'll link up before we do that. So let's start by creating a few measures here. So let's start by creating the title, which is basically just the total sales and then the actual value itself. So that one is pretty simple. So we're going to just name this one title call it total sales and then concatenate it with just the value of the total sales. So simple enough. The next one is the subtitle, which is, is a little bit wordy. We'll try to go through it line by line. And it's the same subtitle that we used in a previous video. It's just so that we can visualize something here. So let's start by creating a few variables. So let's create that variance minus total sales previous year. And then let's calculate the percentage difference. So it will be basically total sales and um, total sales previous year like this minus one, which will give us the percentage difference. Next is the sign which is what we want to show if it's plus or minus. So if var is greater than zero, we want to show a plus. Otherwise, we want to show nothing. Let's also create the trend. And in this case, we'll just use the same calculation because I just wanted to show and see how we can add that arrow. So using the same logic, I'm just going to copy that. If the variable is like this, let's change the plus into a an arrow. So let's go to the symbols and under geometric, let's just choose this one so that it just we're just saying basically that's going up. Now all of that is done. Let me just change it into something else. So now let's combine this all together. So sign to add a space there. And then the sign, which is the plus or minus. And then we're going to add the percentage, but we're going to wrap it with a format because we want to show it in percentage values. So exactly the same as what we've done in the previous demo. So it should be like this. 0, .0 0.0 percentage. And then we'll add the pipe to have and give them a bit of space. And then the sign again to show if it's plus or minus. And then again, we're going to show the variable. But we're going to wrap it with a format to show it as um, if there's thousands, we want to show like a little comma. So zero comma like this. And I think that should be it. So we'll show that. Uh, let me just show you how that looks like before we continue, because that was a bit lengthy and I didn't want to spend too much time on that. So uh, here we go. So this is what it outputs. And as you change your categories, so does that change. So we're going to add it as a subtitle here uh, shortly. So the last bit is to create this logic to highlight the highest and the lowest. Now, I've already covered it in a previous video, so we'll use the same logic here. Go check out that video if you want to know more about it. Um, but like before, I'm also just going to kind of blitz through it so that we don't spend too much time on it. So I'm going to name it highlight. And then we're going to say variable, first of all. We're going to get a clean table. I'm removing any filter context to it. So I'm going to name it table. I'm going to create summarize. All selected from our order details table and uh, group it by month. And then the column will be called sales. And then the value is total sales like this. So that's the first variable. Now to calculate and find out what the highest is, we're going to use max. max max x use the table that we've just summarized and the calculation is the total sales we'll do the same thing for the lowest 
So min x table total sales like this. Now we'll create a switch in our return just to create this uh, this logic. We're going to say if the total sales is equals to highest, we want to change the color of that marker to green. If the total sales is equals to the lowest value, I want to show it as red. Otherwise, so and anything else, we want to show it as an alpha. Now, I've not tested it to see if it works if you put anything else here, but the alpha seems to work here. So the, the code for the alpha is hashtag six Fs and two zeros. That is the logic. So let's summarize here. So what we're doing here, so this measure is what we're using to conditionally format the markers to change the colors based on their actual values in a month on month context. So if it's the highest month, it will show or it will mark as green. If it's the lowest, it will mark as red. Otherwise, it will be hidden. So this code, this hex code is alpha, which basically means like don't show. So I think that's all of the DAX measures that we need to set up. Now we're ready to actually do the cool part, which is to format our line chart here. So let's go to our line chart here and let's make a few changes here. So let's first go to more options. Let's uh, remove our axes because we don't need them anymore remove the titles as well. For the lines, we want to make the stroke a little bit smaller because bear in mind that's going to be a small KPI card. We also want to adjust the titles to be as small as possible. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want, but we'll, I'm going to keep it small for now. We're also going to enable the subtitle so that we can, we can add that and make it dynamic as well. I'm going to change it into the same font. Here we are. Let's add the markers and let's add a few things here. So I think I don't like the color of that. So let me just change the color, the default color into like that. And let's change the titles to those um, DAX calculations that we've done. So hit the FX icon here, field value change that to the title. Oh, I think I've messed something up there. I think I wanted to change this into a currency. So title. So let's let's add that currency bit. Because I wanted to have the pound sign there as well. So let's add pound like this. Here we go. So it shows 87,000 pounds. So now let's move on to the next bit, which is the subtitle FX field value based on the subtitle here. If you hit OK, so you can see that now you have that value that changes. As you make changes, so does that value. And I think I did, I wanted to have something else there to show. So Let's go back to the subtitle and I wanted to show an arrow going down if the value versus previous month is going down. So I'm going to open up the emoji board here. It's Windows dot if you don't know yet. It's the symbol. Then we'll simply just choose the down arrow. Now, if you hit enter, you'll see that that down arrow is there now in our KPI card. And shows up arrow if it's the value is going up compared to previous year. The next thing is to update the actual markers to show the highest or lowest. Now, what you'll notice, if we go to the markers and colors, you'll see that there's no FX icon here, which um, is a little bit concerning, um, but there is a trick to get around this limitation. So if you go to your build your visual, change it into a bar chart temporarily. Now you will have the ability to change the colors of your columns here. So if you hit FX here and change the color based on the calculation that we've created, so the highlights, 
you'll see that it only highlights those months that are the highest or lowest. So now if you go and switch back to the line chart, there you go. So you'll see that within this KPI card, it kept those colors, even though it's not available in the markers option in the line chart. So that's a bit of a hack if you didn't know yet. Um, and the only other thing is to remove and hide all of these other markers um, because we're not interested in them. So to do that, you just simply change the size and you'll see that if you change it all the way to zero, OK, it won't let you, but there you go. So it will let you see all of those um, lines uh, while keeping the highest and lowest colored. I think we can make the lines. I think the lines are maybe a bit too thin. Here we go. So that's it. And obviously the last thing is just to make it look pretty. So I like to add a few things here under visual border. Let's add a colored border here. So a gray border with rounded corners. And there you have it. So you now have a KPI card that allows you to give that gives you tool tips, gives you comparisons against previous months or previous years or your targets, your budgets, and is fully dynamic. So as you make selections um, within your slicers, it not only changes the line charts, but it recalculates and highlights which months are the highest and the lowest. That, and that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create this kind of sparkline charts in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.